Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is security a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Secure and Preserve Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll explore basic security concepts and principles including passwords, directory services, access control lists, and role-based versus user-based security systems. An access permission schema is primarily an anti-trespassing gating device designed to keep out every potential user of the system except for any the owner has granted permission to. In the past, this purpose was served on an individual PC basis by material devices like hardware keys and dongles. But the prevalence of large-scale network-based computing infrastructures has rendered those devices cost prohibitive. So nowadays, access permission is granted by software programs that include password-protected login procedures, directory services, and access control lists. According to John Daintith's 2004 Directory of Computing, a password is a unique character string held by each user, a copy of which is stored within the system. During login, an authentication process takes place. If the password entered by the user corresponds with the stored value, the user is accepted by the system and is on his or her way. A good password should contain at least six to eight apparently random characters. Personal details like vehicle license numbers or relatives' names are too easily guessed to be secure, and even dictionary words are susceptible to the automated, exhaustive search procedures used by hackers. It goes without saying that you should never share a password because that destroys the principle in which password protection is grounded, secrecy. In the case of a forgotten password, the most secure method to restore it is to have it reset, a practice that's an essential part of password management policy. But then, we knew that already, didn't we? A directory service identifies all resources on a network and makes them accessible to users and applications. Resources include email addresses, computers, and peripheral devices like printers and scanners. Ideally, the directory service should make the physical network topology and protocols transparent so a user on a network can access any resource without knowing where it is or how it's physically connected. Two of the most widely used are LDAP, the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, which is used primarily for email addresses, and Netware Directory Service, NDS, which is used on Novell Netware networks. Virtually all directory services are based on the X.500 ITU standard, although it's so large and complex that no vendor complies with it fully. An access control list, or ACL, is a list of permissions attached to an object in a computer file system that specifies which users or system processes are allowed to access it, as well as what operations are permitted or prohibited. Each entry in a typical ACL specifies a subject and an operation. For instance, if a file has an ACL that contains alice, delete, this would give alice permission to delete the file. Note that an ACL is a form of authorization, which is about defining what you can do. And that's a concept that differs from authentication, which is about validating who you are. Role-based security provided by LDAP and NDS directories and ACLs have several advantages over user-based security systems which are those built on usernames and passwords. Their primary advantage is the ease of implementation and management because the number of roles will almost always be smaller than the number of users. And if everyone in a role needs to be changed, it can be done once to the role permissions in the ACL rather than being changed separately for each user. There are many ways to apply security to information and information systems, some heavier duty than others, but all effective if properly deployed. And that's the key, isn't it? properly deploying them so they meet the needs of your particular situation. By way of review, what we covered here were these important basic security-related concepts, passwords, 
directory services, access control lists, and role-based versus user-based security systems. With this as background, you may now wish to visit the module covering other security concepts, including information classification schemes, encryption technology, and redaction. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctored test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.